Hello friends, and welcome to another tale of debauchery with Strange. This one takes place on the Tumblr Am I the Asshole blog. Am I the Asshole is far better known as a subreddit. If you are unfamiliar, the concept of Am I the Asshole is that people will usually anonymously air their personal dramas, their confusing personal dramas, and allow the community to inform them whether they are the asshole in the situation. Tumblr has always enjoyed a good Am I the Asshole screenshot from Reddit. However, the advent of Tumblr polls not only created the worst cake known to man, but also provided a very helpful voting system for this kind of thing. So Am I the Asshole is now also a Tumblr blog, and we can enjoy it in our native environment. I'm here today to tell you a story from Am I the Asshole Tumblr that went slightly viral a couple, uh, at this point a couple of weeks ago, if we're being honest. This is the legend of the Portland Polycule commune cult situation. But first, a word from our sponsor. Every day of my life, I receive emails. Hello, dear sir, this limited time offer click here for you, and I've got a feeling you've received a few emails in your day as well. Weird spam like that is the result of data brokers who sell your information to scammers and other unsavory types. Thankfully, the sponsor of today's video, Aura, can help protect you. Aura will identify data brokers that are selling your information online and automatically put in requests to have that information removed. And Aura does a lot more than just help you take care of data brokers. Aura is your antivirus, your VPN, your password manager, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. Just using Aura is so much easier than downloading all kinds of different apps for all of those different purposes. It covers all of your online security bases conveniently in one place, which personally, for me, is a very big selling point because I hate technology. I love knowing that it's all just dealt with for me. And if you too are interested in stepping up your online security game, you can head over to aura.com slash strangeons to start your two week trial today. That link will be in the description down below for your clicking. And now I return you to your regularly scheduled content. All right, we are now ready to begin. Get the Hungarian dance number five. This is a specific personal request on the part of the writer of this post. One could even consider it canon. Am I the asshole if I call out my roommate's self-centered behavior? I live in a communal space where everybody except C shares freely. C got a good job through connections and is able to spend freely on themselves, spending little on household items, groceries, etc. They say they're broke every month, but I've seen their takeout containers in Amazon boxes, so maybe it's a spending problem? Worst of all, when we're low on food, C just disappears for a few hours and comes back instead of cooking with everyone. I've told C they're being selfish and should start considering other people, but it goes in one ear and out the other. I offer to help them budget, but they don't listen. They barely spend more than $400 of their $2,000 a month on groceries for the house. The rest just goes to their own lavish lifestyle while the rest of us suffer. I want them to pay their fair share. Am I the asshole for asking them to be fair? The mod of the Am I the Asshole blog then posted a screenshot of another ask this person had sent, providing a few more details. My roommate C works a privileged job making nearly 26K and always buys expensive clothing and food for themselves. C spends less than 20% of their income on food and supplies to share with the house. And when I called them on it, they just looked sad and didn't reflect on their behavior at all. Worst of all, when the kitchen is a mess and there's not enough food, they just leave for an hour without saying anything. I think they're buying fast food. The poll received 60.9% of votes in favor of this person being the asshole. You're kind of the asshole here. It's their money. They can do whatever they want with it. As long as they are in fact contributing a reasonable amount, 25% of their monthly income is still a decent portion to be given to the household. If somebody starts badgering me about what I'm spending my hard-earned money on, I'd also be pretty blasé about it. You're the asshole. You're way too controlling. It's borderline creepy. 26k is not a lot of money. They don't owe you anything. Did you really just use $2,000 a month and lavish lifestyle in the same sentence? Spindercaster then slid into the comments of this post, to clarify some more details. C has the highest salary of the house and spends it mostly on their own stuff. They also eat communal meals, which to be fair, they also usually contribute to. They pitch in when they can, there's no agreement on how much, but they also go shopping online and get Habit Burger five times a week, and they wouldn't be broke if they stopped doing that. We are supposedly an anti-capitalist household, but with their gross spending, it's pretty uneven. This living situation sounds totally insufferable. Absolutely love the update on this one. We're an anti-capitalist household, which means my roommates have to give me their money. Come on, man. 26K is fucking nothing, are you kidding me? Also, $400 a month on communal stuff is a lot already. Seems like none of you are budgeting effectively. How many of you live together anyway? $400 is reasonable. There's 10 people. How much does everyone else spend? Why the hell are they spending $400 to help feed 10 people when they 
they barely eat with you, they shouldn't be spending any more than they use, and you're the asshole for insisting they spend more? For an anti-capitalist, you're sure obsessed with taking the fruits of someone else's labor. Landlord-type behavior, honestly. You sound like an entitled prick. I hope your roommate moves out so you stop sponging off them like a leech. Please God, I need someone in Portland to unmask this cult. I need C to see this and start shit, oh my god. The rest of us also chip in when we can. That's what should make it fair. Two other people pay for supplies totaling $500. I've spent $5,000 on clothes and furniture for my other roommates. One other person barely gets by on donations and has to buy her own food due to an eating disorder. My parents gave me way more than $400 a month, and since I don't have a spending problem, I still have savings. Maybe C should learn from me and put away some money for later. Honestly, I wish C was buying natural supplements and yoga classes. They say they're suffering from joint pain and can't always do chores even though they're like 32. I told them to try yoga, but they just walked away. Are you a fucking troll? You have to be trolling. There's no way you're this stupid. Digging themselves a deeper grave. The absolute balls, gender neutral, on OP to ask this on their main and not on anonymous. Like, you are an asshole for all of this. A quick check to your blog shows you want to move out of this place anyway, so why do you still care about what your roommate is doing? You get money from your parents and you're complaining? Groceries, $4,000 a month. Supplies, $500 a month. Clothes and furniture, $5,000 a month. Someone help me budget, my commune is dying. Adding in, my parents give me an allowance and have you tried yoga, have pushed this into troll territory and is no longer believable, sorry OP. No, my parents don't give me an allowance, those are my own savings. Okay, not clear on how that's supposed to work. Wanna vote you're the asshole twice? Back off and stop obsessing over your roommate's personal budget. You are not morally superior because your parents gave you a huge allowance, which allowed you to build up savings. Focus on yourself and let your roommate live their life. If you want to do communal living, then you need to all sit down and decide on a budget. But honestly, I think it might be better for everyone if you just do your own thing at this point. Jesus crow, stop adding information. You sound like the most insufferable tool and you will never not be the asshole. We don't pay rent because M's parents own the place. We live in Portland, not that it matters. We live in Portland, not that it matters, as if that's not some of the most vital information possible for this post. OP, if you're for real, you and your household need to read up on how to actually run an intentional community. It is frankly a very difficult and thankless task to organize that type of housing, and you are probably better off just being roommates with a written agreement for who pays what. Plus, all 10 would individually qualify for SNAP in my state, including C. Fuck you mean lavish? It's not a minimum wage job, as so many of you have assumed. They work 24 hours a week, a day a week, and it's mostly delivery work, so it's basically a desk job in their car. It's a nice car too. Plus they got a side gig so they can just keep buying things like $100 jackets and fancy weatherproof boots. They're not impoverished by any means, they're just self-centered. OP, do you like live on earth? Is C the only one of you with a job? This is bonkers. Yeah, every single edition is making you more and more the asshole LMAO. Oh, I just reread that and you said 24 hours a week, a day a week, as if that means anything. I work 40 hours a week, less than two days a week, but it doesn't mean I'm doing all of those hours at once. C is not working one singular day of the week, 24 hours straight. That's how I know you've never worked or at least don't have a job if this is how you view their hours. This person is a fucking delivery driver and you're saying it's basically an office job? Are you fucking insane, LMAO? Well, they eat a lot of the food and they use way more of the Dr. Bronner's than most of us do. The winter gear doesn't have to be so expensive. I got mine at the thrift shop. You mean more of the food that they pay for? And soap? These insane group living situations always happen in Portland. For real, hearing that this is in Portland suddenly made everything make total sense. Privilege job. C is an Uber driver making 26K in fucking Portland. I'm going to scream. C works delivering oxygen tanks or whatever to seniors in the area. They got it through their aunt and uncle. I'm unemployed and living off food stamps and savings at the moment. It's hard to find a good job in this economy. You know they have to pay for gas, right? Are you fucking stupid? It's a 2015 Nissan Leaf, so it's not like they have to pay for gas. I want to hope this post is bait or it bloomed from a seed of truth and the rest is rage fuel because I have hope in my heart for mankind and I want to believe that someone could not be this idiotic, callous, and stubborn when fighting a flame war against like 50 opponents in the replies. But I know it's real. OP is really this horrible. God is dead. Average Portland living situation, to be honest. Wow, you're a bitch, OP. A burger meal is about $12, which would be spent more wisely on cheaper, healthier food or supplies for the house. Factor in that C is doing this five times a week. That's enough to close the gap in our groceries. We do go to the food bank, but not often because M and C are the only ones with cars. M is busy with school and C has decided that their car is personal property. Also, I'm usually asleep when the food bank is open. I feel like this is performance art. You're the asshole. You wouldn't be so poor if you didn't eat burger. If you were smart like me and had parental allowance you saved instead of spending all your time working and buying things, you'd be able to spend more money on supporting me.
I'm an anti-capitalist. The fact that OP is responding on their main is so fascinating because otherwise this would have been so immediately disregarded as bait slash an unrelated third party coming on and claiming to be OP, right? But like, we have tangible proof the asker and the replier are the same person. And unless they made a whole blog with history just to set up this one bit, this has to be in some way real. I'm not even tackling the ask itself because I think it's self-evident you're the asshole. Has decided their car's personal property. It literally is. You are a tar pit of a human being and C may very well be saving up their money in secret to get the hell away from you. Also, are you part of a cult? Because this sounds like a cult living situation almost. Bro, you can't even wake up for the food bank hours? You can't be that worried about food. Doesn't Portland have a pretty okay transit system? System. The MAX, that's the Portland Transit System, is so fucking annoying and we have to walk like 12 minutes to even get there. It would be so much easier if C just let us borrow the car. I don't know why people keep saying this is a cult, it's literally not, or asking if we're dating. None of your business, lol. Six of us are in a rotating polycule, but not C. God forbid you walk 12 minutes to get somewhere. People are saying this is culty because you spend an insane amount of money on furniture and clothes for your roommates, and also you said that it's weird for C to act like their car is their own personal property. That isn't normal. C's allowed to have boundaries about who uses their car and when. Trying to undermine basic stuff like that is a massive red flag. If I were C, you and I would have had a physical altercation by now. <laughs> You're the asshole big time. Also, most living situations don't require subscribing to a whole ideology that you must follow in every aspect of your life, lest you be judged slash ostracized from the in-group. That's cult shit. I just found out that P, my March and July girlfriend, has been going on burger runs with C. Honestly, I wish she had cheated instead. My head hurts. I hope you're happy. I'm sorry for this betrayal. Please tell us more. P and C go out together every weekend to quote unquote charge the car, but they also go get burgers in secret. Sad face. This is a huge betrayal. Since I thought P and I were on the same page about equitable spending, P is the other one with a job, by the way. We are going to have a talk about this before we start dating again in March. Sad face. I would love to spend 24 hours as a fly on the wall in this household. I hope your March and July girlfriend goes on so, 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 so many burgers runs with C. I hope they have a burger themed wedding even. Regardless of whether this is real or fake, it is top tier Tumblr drama. Hell, being fake would probably add to that. Jesus fuck crab bucket. It's just burgers, my dude. My January and May girlfriend Kay just found this post. She's setting up her blankets on the couch. B and A are laughing at me. This is worse than the time our vacuum broke and we had to use a lint roller to clean up after our 12 cats. Sad face. Aw, you ruined it, man. Now it's not funny anymore. But it was incredibly funny while it lasted. So good job for that. But I just can't suspend my disbelief anymore. 12 cats, get the fuck out of here. You don't have 12 cats. There's no way. I was snooping on their old posts and saw mention of hoarding being an issue here. So it is within the realm of possibility still, to be honest. I saw a post on their blog about two cats. So I assume they really just have two cats and the rest is an elaborate troll. There's apparently a feral kitten problem on the house backyard. 12 cats doesn't seem far-fetched to me. I skimmed through seven months of OP's blog and they seem pretty normal. Living with roommates who are kind of shitty about trans men, maybe not great about COVID safety, but otherwise no mention of any of this rotating polycule 10 person no rent situation. There were no posts about Portland, but plenty about living in California, also having a job and doing things during the daytime. Also, they're at least 35. I don't get what kind of bit this is supposed to be. According to their own blog, half a year ago, OP had a job and was posting about getting takeout weekly, having allergic reactions to drinking lattes and spending $200 on a single house plant. But fuck C for buying some decent winter gear, right? The cognitive dissonance at play here is even greater than any of us could have imagined if they aren't making up most of this stuff. To clarify though, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting takeout, being lactose intolerant, or considering spending $200 on a rare cultivar of a houseplant that you like. But if you do that stuff, you're also a hypocritical asshole for judging someone else or also spending their own money on things they like or they need for their work. LOL. Portlanders need to be sent to a lab for studying. Why do these people regularly live like this? New theory. After spending some time on OP's blog, I found out some details that do and don't add up. I now strongly suspect that OP is C and made this post to make a point to their weird controlling roommates. For example, OP talks about having a job in the last few days on their blog, on wanting to move out, but other details line up like weirdo roommates, hoarding cats. I'm a 44 year old Portlander and I can confirm this is a Portland thing. In my early twenties, I was in and out of bullshit living situations like this, but I at least contributed my own money and got the fuck out when things got damn toxic. Honestly, if I didn't live in a 500 square foot studio, I'd be trying to find C and offering a couch to surf while disentangling from this nonsense. 12 minutes walk to the max too much, cry harder. I made the 18 minute walk to the max daily with a broken leg. No one should live in Portland. I'm still on Beelzebufo's theory that OP is C and they're trying to make a point to their 
their roommates. The only extra supposition you'd have to make for it all to still click is that COP must have moved from California to Portland sometime between their last post about being in California and now, and didn't realize there weren't habit burgers in Portland. Because they're off and on, their blog is definitely active and has been for a while, and their personal posts on said blog line up roughly with this submission. As hilarious as that level of commitment to the bit would be, I 100% believe OP just is that way and is completely unaware. Because again, I know a dozen people just like OP. Some of it definitely lines up, but some of it doesn't. If OP isn't see themselves pretending to be one of their roommates and they just forgot to click anon, then they would be lying either in the submission or on their blog about being unemployed, because they had tagged a post like a week ago with me at work, and would previously blog about having a job, no mention of parents giving them money or living on food stamps or whatever. Those discrepancies, the lack of habit burgers in Portland, and the tone of all the follow-ups makes more sense if you figure the submitter is see themselves and taking the piss on this horrendous housemate, and they just forgot to click on and on initially and then just ran with it afterwards. That's why all the follow-ups paint a comically uncharitable picture of someone that is so out of touch. It's not like that's not been done with Am I the Assholes before. OP's personal blog paint a picture of someone who was in their 30s because they remember 9-11, who at least used to live in California where they do have habit burgers, and now has a bunch of weird roommates and a shitty job that doesn't exactly match OP's description as per their by the asshole submission, but it does sound like C, if you assume C moved to Portland within the last year and a half or so anyway. Oh, it turns out they just keep that habit burger cup in their car because they miss California. <laughs> great, great cover in your ass. <laughs> I thought habit burger was a made up place. I'm gonna be real y'all, I don't trust the submitter to know exactly which fast food chain their roommate is eating at, nor exactly how many times a week they do it. C grew up with money too, to be frank. That's probably why they hate sharing. They finally confessed it at the last house meeting, so I may be a privileged asshole here, but I'm not the only one. I know like eight different people who used to steal their roommate's food and weed and claim it was actually leftist praxis because they don't believe in personal property. I believe this person exists. Anybody in this thread smoke weed? Tumblr user Stars and Shadows made a helpful the Portland Seasonal Polycule No Rent 10 Housemate 12 Cat Cult question mark infographic uh, for casual readers of this post who do not want to scroll through 1,000 plus comments the way that I did. Basically trying to find out what the hell is going on here, who are all of the housemates slash polycule members and what are their relationships. Spinders Catster had some even more helpful clarifications for us after that. Like I told that other person, A is the one with the most shoes, so she does the most cleaning. B is the one with the eating disorder, and she runs a bike club and does chores when asked. H comes and goes, mostly for group meals and to sleep on the guest couch. Q is our depression doula. She leads us in Hasna Yoga during new moons, and T facilitates our ML reading group. W cooks, and the other W cleans up after her when C isn't home. It's really not that complicated. D is our full-time hairdresser, but can't do my hair today since they're in the doghouse for sucking up another spider. This all happened when C took the vacuum in to get fixed, and it works better than ever. I think C and the vacuum repair person are fucking. The depression doula is just like a regular doula, but for depression. She helps the depression leave the body. We do Hasna Yoga and moon chanting together. What Wait, you mean a literal doghouse? It's a heated doghouse. Hold on, I think we're up to too many people now, including the two girlfriends previously mentioned. And OP, isn't this 11? Spinders Catcher was helpful enough to tell us their monthly polycule schedule, which other Tumblr users on this post then of course went on to make many helpful infographics about. They also informed us we rotate bedrooms to keep it more equitable too. OMG, C just came home with groceries and told me to go fuck myself. Go fuck the vacuum lady, I said. Two can play this game. Another detail posting to OP being C is that last night they posted a photo from the grocery store, looks like Trader Joe's, before commenting here that C came home with groceries. B is smashing dishes because the dishwasher is broken and some people forgot their dishes in the sink. Now B is in the doghouse, so D has to move back inside on the couch. So I really hope K comes back to bed with me or D will end up being in my bed and that'll put us over the limit for 2020 if we start dating again in February, it's a leap year. It's, this is a fucking disaster. Do any of you guys smoke weed? I think it could help in this situation. No, we don't smoke weed. Not sure what that has to do with anything. We get our honey from the MJ farmer and apiarist couple down the road. Should be plenty of whatever we need. The Dr. Bronner's bottle has one fourth less since they came home. Proof. B and Q are crying. D is eating the nutritional yeast plain again. So I don't know what W and A are gonna use to flavor the stew tomorrow. Am I the problem? C is cooking one, one serving of pasta. How selfish of them. The person with the most shoes obviously brings the most dirt into the house and is the most privileged in contact with the earth. That is why A does most of the dusting and vacuuming. How do you split up your chores? Alphabetically? 
fascinated by the logic that the person with the most shoes brings the most dirt into the house? Is she wearing all the shoes at once? Does she have more than two feet? Are they wearing all the shoes at once? Are they a spider? Is that why you put someone in the doghouse for sucking up a spider? Is that why you care so much about anti-spider bigotry because you have a spider in your polycule? They live in Portland, there's no saving any of them. Ugh. B fell through the rotten deck during group calisthenics this morning. Now they're taking C's car to the hospital, but when I need it for food, it's a no-go. This house is clearly biased against me. Do you know you are a delightfully insane person? LMAO, this is fake as hell, but also I'm from Portland and I've seen realities that rival this. Tired and bored now, OP equals C, everyone sucks here for dragging it out so long eat each other. Sorry for not updating, B and A and K just got back from the hospital and turned the Wi-Fi back on. B is fine, except for some scrapes and bruises. Anyway, rotating bedrooms isn't that unusual, and since we don't have too many personal belongings, and I bought all of us the same unigender cotton organic tracksuits, so they're interchangeable, it's hardly any effort at all, especially if you manage your time wisely. Okay, for sure this is not real. After the I bought all of us the same unigender organic cotton tracksuits comment, like that is just comically cult-like. Why is there a monthly polycule schedule? What benefit is there to having a schedule as opposed to not having one? What would be the harm in doing away with the schedule? Who was the first person to go, you know what this polycule Polycule needs timetable logistics, and why did everyone else agree? S is the bassist of a touring punk band who sleeps with us in August. She and H both come and go. I think they're dating. Ugh. T just tried to vacuum up the broken porcelain without sweeping first. She has no house skills. W and A are on strike tonight, and D won't replace the nutritional yeast since she's still mad about the doghouse, so I guess we're having spirulina banana smoothies and pumpkin omelets for dinner. We usually eat way better food than this. Please draw a bedroom diagram. Who sleeps where? Do the non-polycule members rotate rooms too? Where is the guest couch located? Are your cats included in the polycule bedroom schedule? What time does the polycule schedule roll over? Spinder's catster then responded to this person personally by sending them this ask. The guest couch is in the repurposed breakfast nook between the pile of boxes and the Monstera. Why, you wanna come over? We have room in our calendar from the 7th to the 19th and we always want guests. Bring your own yoga mat, everything else is provided. Fascinating. I want so badly to say yes, partially to meet your cats. Our tracksuits are all black. We got them for our dog's funeral, RIP. Why is everyone sending me asks about blue hair? Kay and I have chartreuse hair to match the door of the bedroom we're sleeping in. Housemates woke me up with their throat singing again, sad face. C doesn't live in a closet. They live in the fourth upstairs bedroom next to the caterpillar reading room where Kay and I sleep. A and Q both have pixie cuts, so they have the Tinkerbell room most of the time. It just makes sense. No one lives in the laundry and the litter box room, not the closet either. We use the closet for solo screen meditation. Obviously. We rotate our polycule based on our birth charts, except for S, who was only here one month, so we have to make do with August. This house would be the perfect living situation if only C would chip in a little bit more. It's not like we're paying rent. It's not that hard to budget. Oh, and if D would get rid of her 25 boxes of records and broken turntable from six years ago when her dad died. The girls are pouring coffee on what is left of the ice cream. I am at my limit. Some of the most active members of this comment thread then started receiving asks like this from an anonymous Tumblr user. Hi, this is Kay from the Portland House. I can attest 100% that some of this is real and some is fake. The tracksuits and the clothes sharing are partially true. The record collection has quite a few tapes in it. Anything else you want me to clear up, just let me know. All right, sure, I'll play. This makes you Kay, I assume, the Jan and May partner. How come none of the details on OP's blog line up with the post in terms of identity? Y'all really change your hair color based on what room you're staying in? How did your dog die? Why does it seem like exactly one person pays for groceries for 10 people? How many people in the house are vegan? Do you have to be a similar size to everyone else to join the polycule so you fit into the prescribed uniform? Do you guys have families that are worried about you? What's the name of the punk band S is in? And do they really tour for the same 11 months of every year? Does everyone hate C or do you each have your own least favorite Favorite roommates. And really no one smokes weed? That part I think was the least believable. The mod of Am I the Asshole then reblogged this post with some of their own questions for Kay. What parts of the saga are fake specifically? Is Spinder's catcher like okay? Like real talk, the way they're live blogging in the replies of the original ask has me a little bit concerned. How old is everybody involved? How did you meet? How is budgeting taken care of with the housemates? For those who work, does part slash all of your paycheck get taken by a certain member? Or like say, if you got your birthday check from a family member, are you allowed control over your own money? What do the parents who own the house think of all of this? OP is a mysterious one. I can't speak to that. Hair color or style to match the rooms we're in? Yeah. Our dog died of canine appendicitis. Everyone pays between 20 and 30% of their income on groceries and cleaning supplies, etc. for the house. T, Q, and D are vegan. None of us eat meat or smoke weed at home. 
M and W2 can't stand the smell of weed. And no, you don't have to be a certain size to join, it just makes clothes easier. Our families aren't worried, why do you ask? The punk band is called the Beta Blockers. They're a hardcore thrash band. They tour on a strict schedule, which is why we get along. C and I have an on-again, off-again love-hate relationship. We study together and play pickleball year-round. Wow, this is setting a really high bar for fake posting in 2024. I can only hope future Tumblr performance art can reach this level of impossible to discern plausibility and pure absurdity. And if by some infinitesimally small chance this isn't fake, you're on nine kinds of bullshit, OP. Hope you can recover. Ugh, we finally came up with a house budget at our full moon meeting. Happy now? I am so scared of what the new house budget is. Someone knocked over the Monstera. Everyone says the cats did it, but it was on a 50 pound base, so I know they're lying. I bet T accidentally bumped it during our ecstatic cleaning this evening, and now she's going to play drums in her room so she can't even hear me knock. Nobody else cares. I have to clean this up all by myself, and of course, the vacuum is broken again. Not the $200 Monstera. Were you able to repot it? The new house budget. Food. $1,100. Cat food, $160. Emotional supplements, $550. Hot tub maintenance, $90. Vet visits, $100 to $300. Cleaning and hygiene supplies, $250. Beads, $60. Candles, $20. Utilities, $350. Carpet cleaner, $25. Home repairs and incidentals, $70 to $150. God damn it, I miss Whole Foods. This has to be a joke. $60 a month for beads? Hi, this is Kay with the two W's and B from the Portland house. Not to worry, we each have our own bank accounts. Most of us have either an allowance or benefits come in. W is on a workers comp and P works at a bar. We're all mostly getting along except for those times when drama happens. Oh well, that's group housing. That's good to hear. I'm still curious exactly which parts of the story are real versus exaggerated if you'd be down to explain more. But I'm glad to have that to set my mind at ease a bit. As for finances, is there a reason why Spinder's catcher is so tilted at C when C's financial contributions seem in line with the agreement mentioned in the other post? Yeah, OP is mad at C for not spending even more on the food budget, which is more of a group problem and should not fall squarely on them. We had a windfall about six years ago and got used to the nice organic foods and stopped going to the food bank. That's dried up now, but C is still able to purchase some nice things for themselves, and I think that's where the jealousy comes in. There might be a crush involved, I don't know. Food for thought. K again. Hi. Just got back from Food Not Bombs with W and A. We're making sweet potato stew. M is here. She says her parents love us because we clean and maintain the house so well. Except for the deck, which we'll have to wait until May. They're 60-something former hippies with tech money who felt like giving back to the community, and I think that's beautiful. You know what? That's kind of ideal. Can't knock it. Hope the stew's delicious. I can't believe 60.9% of you fuckers voted you're the asshole. Incredible. You're all a bunch of judgmental jerks. Presumptuous, entitled, nosy, self-serving assholes. Apparently, we're about to have an emergency house meeting and this is your fault. If they kick me out, I'll have to move back into my parents' pool house in Salinas, the ultimate doghouse. Fuck you all. Where is the vacuum cleaner? Hey OP, what the fuck are emotional supplements? Also wait, there's a fucking hot tub y'all are bothering to maintain while not eating cheap foods and complaining that someone isn't contributing enough to the food budget? W and A aren't cleaning anymore until B and I quote unquote get off our asses and clean. How can we do that when the vacuum is broken and missing? We don't even have any dishes to wash. I don't fucking know what they expect us to do. Oh my god, we've moved on to full names, lol. D is cutting Q and T's hair right the fuck now, and B and I have to clean it with what? There is no vacuum! I'm supposed to be studying right now. I have a big self-test coming up. You have all those cats, someone that cuts hair there all the time, and a person that usually does all the cleaning and you don't have anything but one vacuum? Where's the broom? A mop? Make do with some rags to pick things up. Placing down some cut-up garbage bags for the hair to fall onto. Come on. I come from a large family, you get creative. The broom is locked up in the walk-in garage next to the yak tracks and no one can find the key. Sad face, sad face, sad face, not that you care. They then once again slid into this person's asks personally to send them this picture of the locked up broom. <laughs> How in the world does that stop you from using it? I wasn't expecting a photo though, well played there. Wow, cleaning that up took forever. I have to do all of the cleaning around here and I'm the asshole? Wow, just wow. Holy shit, I just got word that the beta blockers are coming to town for an emergency concert tomorrow and they need a place to crash. Where are they going to sleep? S and H will want the guest couch, but K is still there. I'm in the Caterpillar reading room. T is in the magenta room, A and Q are still in the Tinkerbell room, fucking C is in the indigo room, P is staying in the Rojo room, D and B are in the ocean study room, and M is in the sunshine room, and the walk-in garage is nasty. This is a logistical nightmare beyond comparison. I need to go.
to the screaming closet. I can't sleep. There's a noisy van out front. Ugh, P and C are in the van with the vacuum repair woman. I'm so disgusted. They're kissing and laughing over burgers. Oh God, I almost fell over in disgust. The ultimate betrayal. This has been by far the worst night of my entire life. Fuck you all, I'm done. This was the final message that Spinders Catster posted in the comment thread. However, a few Tumblr users that had been active around this situation kept hearing from Kay. Specifically, a number of people all got this exact message. Hi, this is Kay from the Portland Polycule House. How are you? If you're local, I'd love to invite you to our Howl at Powell's event. W and I are organizing it. Next Saturday at 2 p.m. we will be in front of Powell's by the bush. I'll be wearing a teal Columbia jacket, black pants, and a beanie. Together we will howl to raise awareness for canine appendicitis, RIP our dog. Please bring signs if you can. Hope to see you there. I tragically must report, that there was no howl. Also, canine appendicitis is not real, but it does make me think, was this some kind of an elaborate ploy to convince real Tumblr users to have a real rally for canine appendicitis awareness? Because if so, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> is the Portland Polycule commune cult thing real? In a way, sure. In our hearts. Because clearly the reason why people find this so funny is because it is so similar to actual realities. A Portland Polycule as bad as this. Nay, a Portland polycule beyond your wildest nightmares exists. But yes, in the grand tradition of Tumblr, uh, this is, it, it's fake. They say right what you know, and Spinders Catsteer does clearly seem to have taken some inspiration from their own life, creating all kinds of confusion among people who were digging through their old posts. But I think even if you don't dig through their old posts, just looking at their writing, there are many additions to this post alone. It's just too perfectly crafted to be real. And then of course, there are the discrepancies in the story that other commenters found once stalking their blog. When Spinders Caster got wind that I was planning to make a video about this, they reached out to me and asked me to omit any photos of them as well as the names of their pets, which was just like, made me cackle because it's so perfectly in character. You've been naming your, your actual human roommates by their full names, and it's the pet's names that you're concerned. You're concerned with the dog's privacy. However, it does seem likely to me that they, they made this request because obviously photos of them are very identifying information, names of their pets, some of which people learned from looking back at old posts. Those are probably real, whereas the roommate's names are not real. This is a great burger. I really do feel like a giant baby in a high chair right now with my fucking little glass of wine for babies. One Tumblr user, Tumblr user Motel Stink, posted a screenshot of this conversation with their roommate going into how Spinders Caster was obviously a person from California, not from Portland, and didn't talk about Portland like any native Portlander would. They then received a DM from Spinders Caster asking them how to more accurately talk about Portland, specifically the Portland transit system, just completely glazing over, oh, by the way, I'm a troll, and just straight to, so how do I refer to the train? Thank you, of course, to Motel Stink for sending me these screenshots. There is still some debate to be had about whether the original Am I the Asshole submission was real and everything afterwards was just them running with it. However, Spinders Caster has since deleted a lot of personal posts and it seems like they do not want to be found. So I think we should respect that. We've all had fun, okay? There was no need to make it not fun anymore by harassing this person. We thank them for this wonderful piece of literature and social commentary that they have crafted and for the burger craving. I literally got hungry while I was editing this video. Good night, sweet tumblerinas. Good night.